Let me introduce you to a very special snowflake. This is James O'Brien, a radio presenter here in the United Kingdom. I had a recent encounter with him in which I disagreed with his opinion, so he blocked me on Twitter. Not a problem in itself, but it got me thinking as to how people in the media can successfully generate their own echo chambers. And so that's what I'm looking at today in my soapbox. Okay, I think we should start with a bit of background. Um, now, this is not, I'm not like gunning after this guy as such. It's just because um, this was a rather acute example that happened to me personally. And so that's why this person's being singled out as an example. Um, I wish no harm on the individual. Um, whether or not. <laughs> Well, no, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. I, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm not... Uh, I, I do not wish him or any of his, of his friends or family harm. Um, how, however, let's, um, I, let's, let's see why this is such a good example of the hypocrisy and echo chamber that is uh, many of the, of, of the mainstream media's um, uh, presenters. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, right. So, uh, so here he is, James O'Brien... Um, he went to Ampleforth College and then London School of Economics. So he's certainly not, um, although, he, although he's made a big, big thing about the fact he was adopted, um, he was adopted by a very privileged family and so that in turn meant that, uh, because Ampleforth College, um, you know, so here it is. Um, you know, this is this is um, this is a, an exclusive uh, education that he that he had. Um, it's like out of here came Ju- uh, Julian Fellows, uh, Rupert Rupert Everett. Um, you, you, uh, you know, you know, it's like people would expect uh, people to to come from from here to be posh. Um, so so James O'Brien worked very hard at actually trying to come across as a normal geezer. Ra- ra- rather than someone uh, who's who's actually had any any degree of privilege in his upbringing, um, you know, and, and and London School of Economics, um, as well. Uh, so, so uh, uh, yeah, I, you, know, you know, which 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 again, pe- perfectly respectable um, university. Um, it says here describing himself as a champagne socialist, sometimes in jest. Politically, O'Brien has been described as coming from the left. Now, in the past, I've come across him, you know, like watching, you know, like seeing him on, on a couple of things on the television or that. Um, now, here we go, Korea. Uh, it's actually the BBC's The Big Questions that I saw him on to begin with. And my first impression of him was that he was just an obnoxious twat. Um, and then there was one day, it was actually, he used his... Um, his adoption as a trump card on one show and actually I found myself having quite a lot of sympathy and respect for him at the same time sort of going oh uh, uh, you know I've, I've maybe misjudged the guy um, and then a few you know a few years back I come across him when I started listening to the radio you know you know like my job situation changed so so I was then able to listen to daytime radio um, and he was clearly like like a, a like like um, a lefty, uh, but at the same time, he gave the impression that he was at least open to sensible argument. And so, if you could present your case, then it could sway you, you know it could sway the, the the discussion. At least he gave that impression. Uh, that was until Brexit came along, really, uh, and then uh, leading up to Brexit. And then post Brexit, he's been really wearing his um, socialism on his sleeve, um, effectively saying that most people that supported Brexit are racists, um, and it's been getting more shrill uh, leading up to the re-election of Jeremy Corbyn as leader of the Labour Party. Um, and. <laughs> It may be best if, um, all right. Well, well so, so just to summarise, basically, 
Um, he's now throwing his support behind Corbyn um, and he's saying let's not talk about neo-Marxism or, or let's, let's pretend that he never actually supported the IRA. You know, all that can get brushed aside now, let's all fall in behind Corbyn. You have a very old school and idealistic member of parliament who subscribes to a political credo that is quite well established um, going back to about the 1970s. There are some problems involving apparent support for the IRA and similar, but, but essentially speaking, try this on for size, okay? We spend far too much money on war and weapons, and we should be spending that money on the poor. What's not to like about that? Why, why is that even controversial? And the problem there is he's just um, identified himself as a left-wing extremist by doing so, and pretty much everybody else that disagrees with him is calling him a racist. You know, so Brexiters are racist, Trump supporters are racist. When he started talking about Londoners, uh, you, you know, you know it's like this, was, this was him like a bit like, so, 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 he's, so, he's, so he'd been shrill for like the past couple of weeks in particular, you know, you know got to fever pitch, just, just as the, um, uh, uh, the vote for Corbyn to, to, to be the leader of the Labour Party, uh, you know, the second one just went through. So, with that in mind as the background, uh, I'm now going to play a video uh, which is him actually talking about his point uh, of why don't Londoners talk to strangers. But why, why do Londoners react with such disgust and fury to this? So, that, that's the thing. If you live in London, I want you to tell me what, why. Why are we like this? When I'm outside London, I'm garrulous. I'm friendly and I like making small talk and I like chatting to strangers. When I'm inside London, the shutters come down. I, 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 maybe it's because there's so many strange people in the capital and you've all had experiences, we've all had experiences of speaking to someone and wishing after a couple of minutes that we'd never started the conversation at all. Or if anybody starts a conversation with you in London, they're almost certainly going to be a little, how can I put this politely, eccentric. Outside, like, everyone does it. My mum's not eccentric. She's not weird. She just starts conversations with total strangers when she finds herself at a loose end. You go around Sainsbury's with her in Kidderminster, it can take two hours. She stops for a chat with everybody. and That's a northern thing. Why, why don't we do it here? Um, and, um, and so, and so when, he, when he's actually positing uh, his, his feelings like that, and yet he's calling everybody else a racist, um, then my logic was, well, you know, you know so, so, I'm, so what I'm saying here is, um, what he just said is that he's effectively saying that he's more comfortable in areas with low immigration. So, him saying about immigration being so awesome all the time, isn't he being a bit of a hypocrite? And instead of either just like, he could have just, he could have just said, LOL, or he could have said, you know, I didn't mean it like that. Or, he, he, l l there's this option here where he, where he blocked me. Now, by blocking me, that's demonstrating that he's gone beyond uh, reason. He's, he's now in his own echo chamber. And so I then got to thinking, why? Why do these people... Um, ha managed to manage to so successfully generate an echo chamber for themselves, and it's basically because of their ego. It's as simple as that. Uh, I've come to the conclusion it's basically because of their ego, because they've got people who will like tweet them every day, message them every day, tell them how great they are. How uh, is uh, he gets people tell tell like. Say, telling him how, how intelligent he is, how great he is, how right he is. And so he's getting sunshine blown up his ass by a lot of real idiots. Um, and, and, well, and, and left-wing wannabes, I would imagine, where, where they're thinking that everything he's saying is, 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 is pure awesomeness. And now he can no longer handle people challenging him. Because the problem is, although he's got a phone-in show, right, what he, what he does when somebody phones in, is if they agree with him, then he gives them a free pass. If somebody's disagreeing with him, he doesn't let them make their, pro their, their points properly, and he's always uh, deflecting and changing the question. You know, he's moving the goalposts uh, once somebody comes in with a fair point. And so what's happened over time is the sensible people know that there's no point anymore in actually phoning in. 
So it's really only the, 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 the people who don't know what he's like, and so they're not expecting it, so, that, so, that, so, so their guard is down. Or, in all fairness, people that disagree with him who are thick. And so he can run rings around the thick people, no problem at all. Um, and so because uh, the people who could actually blow him away in a real argument don't actually phone in, then that reinforces to him the fact that he's invincible and that he's correct. And so, and so when he's getting the track record of being able to uh, beat anybody uh, in an argument that actually phones him, and he's got, getting sunshine blown up his ass every day by like hundreds of people sending him messages saying, oh, that was awesome, James. Then so, <laughs> suddenly he's, he's, he's believing the, his own hype machine and so he believes he's right. His, he, he had a, a problem with his ego in the first place, but, 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 that's, but that's being hyperinflated. And so somebody like me, who just makes a genuine point, he just can't handle it. He just can't handle it. So there, it, so it's a block me. You know, like I'm saying, I don't have a problem with him, the fact that he's blocked me, but it just demonstrates how he's got the shutters down, <laughs> funnily enough, um, shutters down, shutters come down, um, and I think that's demonstrating what he and the other people where you're sort of going, how come they're managing to talk such baloney all the time? And it's because they've started to believe their own propaganda machine. You know, they've, they've, they've actually forgotten uh, as, 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 as to why they were actually doing their cynical job in the first place. And, and, and now they've actually bought into their own propaganda. And, in my opinion, that's why uh, him and people of his type um, can operate in such, a, in such a public sphere and yet, still ha and yet still have an echo chamber. You know, because they should theoretically be bombarded with lots of different opinions from all sides. And so... If someone had an open mind, they would at least be able to weigh the pros and cons and go, well, that's a fair point. And indeed, uh, many other presenters on the same radio station can actually do that. So, it shouldn't take rocket science to <laughs> extrapolate from this example of Mr. O'Brien to other movers and shakers in the mainstream media and how they can rationalise in their heads as to why there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Okay. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, this is Jabba. This has been my soapbox. And I'll catch you next time.